a homemade do-it-yourself water treatment kit to ensure that your family has safe drinking water during times of power outages, boil water advisories, or a complete shutdown of your water system. Hello, my name is Les, and I want to welcome you to the Chef Prepper channel. And in this video, we're going to look at a water treatment kit that I put together for my family that's inexpensive, especially for the benefits that you're going to reap from it. What I'm going to show you in this video is what I'm doing here in our home. We are talking about safe drinking water, so you need to do your research for yourself before you just simply try to replicate what I'm doing. I will have some articles that I will put links to down in the, down in the description box so you can further your research. I wanted to be sure that we had a backup treatment kit or plan on hand just in case. One that would be easy for everyone in the house to be able to use to make safe drinking water once we had established a proper protocol for using the kit. And I was able to do that. I wanna show you guys what we did. Once you get your kit put together and you have your procedures in place, you can downsize it for your bug out bag. So first, there's a difference between water treatment and water purification, at least for our purposes in this video. For this video, water treatment involves things like boiling water, adding chlorine, and some types of filtering. And these are all done to remove pathogens from the water. Now let's look at the items in the kit. So the first item is some kind of a container to get water in. But if you're going to collect rainwater, you're going to want a much larger container than a one gallon bucket. Next item is going to be some kind of a cloth. Uh, sure, it will work. Something you can pour the untreated water through in order to do that first round of filtering to get the large debris and so forth out of it. So once you've collected the water, you've used your cloth to filter it, you need some kind of a container to actually do the water treatment in. Today we're gonna to use mason jars, but if you're gonna be treating water for several days for several people, you're gonna want a much larger container than that. The next item and the most important is the actual treatment material. And for us, it's Clorox, which is sodium hypochlorite. This particular jug of Clorox is a 7.5% solution. That's very important to understand, and we'll talk about that as we go through the video. There are other treatment methods that you might want to put in your kit. This is calcium hypochlorite, which is pool shock. This is a 65% solution. 65% 7.5%. Big difference. There's also powdered bleach, which is sodium dichloroisocyanurate. The pool shock and the powdered bleach are both available, but they are a little bit more complicated. You would actually use either of those two to make your own do-it-yourself bleach. So if you add those to your kit, what we're doing in the video today would take place after you've made your own bleach solution. But for this kit that I've put together, I wanted something that's a little more simple and easy to use. So we chose the Clorox bleach. Both of those are one third gallon, same size. Just a little of that goes a very long way. That jug costs $4. I don't remember what that one was. It's less than $4. And I'm all for budget prepping and saving money. But when it comes to safe drinking water, I don't trust the dollar store brands. So I'm sticking with the name brand. This one is a 7.5% concentration, which if I do my math right, it's 75,000 parts per million. This one doesn't say what it is on the jug. Nevertheless, these jugs of bleaches and different companies and so forth, they're not all the same concentration of bleach. Therefore, it becomes very, very important. You choose one product, whatever it might be, one concentration of bleach within the product, and you have a set procedure. I'm sure that all of you have heard and are aware that bleach loses its strength over time. And you've probably heard people or read things on websites and so forth that it's good for six months. That doesn't mean there's no chlorine in it after six months. It might not be as strong as far as the chlorine con content. Part of the reason why this kit includes a method of testing. Say the time comes and you've had that sitting on the shelf for three years. Can you still use it? I don't know. But if you got the test strips for it, then you will know. So I have two different 
testing methods or test strips. They're both strips that you put down into the water, and I'll show you those as we do some testing in a few minutes. This one will tell you if the chlorine content is somewhere anywhere between 10 and 200 parts per million. Both of those are too high of a level of chlorine to have in your drinking water. So why would you want this one? So that you would know when you're getting close or in the neighborhood of where you need to be. This one tests multiple things, but what we're interested in is the free chlorine. And this one tests from zero parts per million of chlorine up to 20. We'll talk about the range that you actually need as we do some of the testing. This one is more accurate for smaller concentrations of chlorine, which is what you want in your drinking water. This one you would use more so to tell you if your bleach is still good. And if you're getting in the ballpark as far as how much bleach to a given amount of water. And the last part of the water treatment kit is a dropper. I'm going to be using both of these test kits as we go through the video. I highly, highly recommend that you have some testing methods in your water treatment kit. They don't have to be these brands, of course. But if you're interested in these in particular, there will be links to them down in the description box. I did put a little bit of each uh, jug of bleach into the lids. This one, this one is low splash bleach. I don't know what's in it, but it is obvious to me as I was pouring them out, there's a big difference between those two. That one actually looked like it poured slower, if you can imagine that. It still has a concentration of bleach in it, but if you choose not to get the Clorox, you don't want low splash bleach or scented bleach or colored or whatever. You want just straight unscented bleach. All right, this is the Clorox. So you can see that it's not colored that. I'll explain that just in a second. And this is the True Living Low Splash, Low Splash Bleach. It too has no color. So does that mean there's no chlorine in these? That I've had them for five years maybe? No, that's not what it means. This test kit goes up to 200 parts per million. And it is a test kit for chlorine. This is used in restaurants all across the world to make sure they have enough bleach or enough chlorine to use um, to, or to make a sanitizing solution. Sometimes for dishwater, sometimes for cleaning countertops and so forth. It goes up to 200 parts per million. This one is 75,000 parts per million. I'm not sure what this one is, but it's probably at least 50,000, which would be a 5% solution. So that's why there's no color on here. The concentration of chlorine is so high, it's beyond the scope of this kit to measure. Okay, this is water from our faucet. We are on municipal water. And this is water from our Berkey filter, which came out of the faucet, but has went through the Berkey filter. And instead of getting bleach out of the big jug, I went ahead and made our bug out bag kit, and I'm gonna use that to do the different testing and treating of the different sizes and amounts of water throughout the rest of the video. So our city water is supposed to have chlorine in it. So it should show up on the test. It may not show up on this one, but we'll see. And no, it's not showing up, but that's okay because these test strips start at 10 parts per million. So that's not what we would want in there anyway. Now this one registers from no chlorine all the way up to 20 parts per million. So we know it doesn't have 10 parts. We expect to see some coloration on test strip. We're interested in the free chlorine. There's three parts per million. It's not that dark. One part per million is about right there. There's a half a part. So our city water has roughly one part per million of chlorine in it. And I just got that out like about two minutes ago. Let's see how the Berkey does. 
if the Berkey did its job, shouldn't be any chlorine in this. Zero, zero. There's a half part per million. It doesn't have it. So the Berkey, even though that's not part of what the video is about, the Berkey with the filters we have is getting the chlorine out of the water. It, we also have it set up to get the fluoride and all the other stuff out as well. Now I have one quart of water and we are gonna add the bleach one drop at a time till we get the correct amount. And then I'll put more than we should have in it so you can see how that looks on the test strips. After we get through with what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna have a summary for you guys about putting together a kit, the importance of it, the importance of the testing materials. So don't miss the summary. And now from our miniaturized bug out bag version of this kit, one drop So one drop in the quart of water, there's three parts per million, which it's not to that level. One part per million, really close. So one drop put us at somewhere around one part per million. Let's see what two drops does. So two drops put us in the three to five part per million range call it three parts per million. So we would definitely not want any more than two drops of the seven and a half percent solution per quart of water or eight drops per gallon of water. But that's with my particular water and the seven and a half percent solution. So let's go ahead and add a third drop just to see what it does. So it is certainly more than three. It appears to me that it is between five and 10. So that would be more chlorine than we want in our drinking water. Two drops got us the ideal concentration of chlorine in the water. So I wanna summarize this for you guys. I got some notes because I don't wanna leave anything out because it is very important. So if you choose to do this kind of treatment to your water, your goal is to get 0.5 to 4.0 parts per million in the finished product. Anything less than 0.5 is basically none and it won't do anything. Over four is too much. You wouldn't want to drink water that has more chlorine in it, more chlorine in it than that, with the ideal range being one to two parts per million. So once you get that done, it should have a little bit of a smell of bleach. And it does, of course, this has a little, one would drop too much, but it has a very slight odor of bleach, which it should. After you've got it at the proper concentration, not excessive amount like we do, it needs to sit for 30 minutes or longer before you actually drink it. Once you drink it, if it tastes too strong of chlorine, here it goes. It does have a slight chlorine taste to it, kind of like water that you get from a restaurant when they serve you water sometimes. Um, I would drink that if I were thirsty. I wouldn't worry about it. But it's not the ideal. If you get too much chlorine in your water, add more water. That will dilute it to the t until you get to the right level. Or if you have no more water to add, you, you got to let it sit until it reaches that level that you need. Problem with that might be if you need the water now, but you got too much chlorine in it. For the chlorine to dissipate to the level you want it, might take several hours, might take a few days. So the importance of having the testing kit to get your process and your routine down just like it needs to be so you don't have to deal with too little chlorine or too much chlorine. So I can't stress the importance of having the testing mechanisms for your water treatment kit. Otherwise, when the time comes that you have to actually treat your water to make it safe to drink, if you don't have the testing kit, you're just guessing. Of course, you can boil the water and you don't have to deal with this, but that's a lot of resources, a lot of fuel, and a lot of time. It is the best way to do it, but this is an alternative method, of course. So if you're gonna do this, 
if you're gonna make a kit like this, number one, use the name brand chlorine product. Don't get it, don't trust the dollar store brands. I don't, so I'm not gonna use those. Number two, get just straight bleach. Don't get any kind of sin and stuff, low splash stuff, none of that stuff. Number three, get a testing kit or two like we have or something sent or something similar. Just make a decision to use one particular product, one particular strength in that product, and keep that as your chlorine source. Get your routine down like it needs to be so that you can put it in writing so that everybody who's in your household or in your group know how to make safe drinking water. Don't get different brands or different concentrations Stick with one way, one thing, so that you can repeat the process over and over and over. Once you get your routine down, you don't have to test every time that you make drinking water. Just every perhaps three to six months to, to check the concentration of the bleach that you're using. Remember, this video wasn't to give you an exact how-to. It was to give you a process that you can adopt for your own needs. My question for you guys for this video, do you have an alternative or backup water treatment system to make safe drinking water when the time comes? When the time comes that you need to use something like this to make your water safe to drink, you may also be interested in being able to cook safely indoors without modern grid power. And if so, we have these videos that go into the details about how to do just that.